You've felt it, haven't you? In the electric world, there's a buzz, a low, constant hum of anticipation. Everyone is waiting for one car. It's the most discussed, most mysterious, and most wanted product in years. We're talking about Tesla's affordable car, the end game, the final move in Elon's master plan to put the entire world on four electric wheels. You've seen the name whispered in forums and shouted in headlines, the Tesla Model Q. But let's get one thing straight, right here, right now. Tesla has not named this car. Model Q, Model 2, these are just ghosts, placeholders, names created by the public to give a face to a revolutionary idea. Internally, Tesla calls it the next generation vehicle. The code name? Project Redwood. But honestly, the name doesn't matter. What matters is the promise. The number, $25,000. A full-blooded, next-generation Tesla for the price of a base model hatchback. This is why this isn't just another car launch. You have to understand, this is a fundamental shift. It's a direct assault on the gasoline engine's last stronghold affordability. The 2026 Model Q is not just a baby Model Y. It's a new species of car built by a complete top-to-bottom reinvention of how a factory works. So, we're going to do what we do best here at Dravaxa. We're cutting through the noise. Forget the speculative renders. Forget the hype. We are going to analyze what we actually know. We will deconstruct the battery tech, break down the revolutionary unboxed manufacturing that makes it all possible, and map out the global shockwave this car will create when it finally arrives. This is the story of the $25,000 Tesla. And if you're as serious about car tech as we are, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. You don't want to miss a second of this. So. To really get this, you have to understand the grand strategy. You've heard of Tesla's master plan, right? It's the blueprint. Part one was a simple three-step heist. First, build a high-price, low-volume sports car, the Roadster. Use that cash to build a medium-price, medium-volume car, the Model S and X. Then use that money to build the affordable, high-volume car the Model 3 and Y. And that last step was a knockout. The Model 3 and Y became the best-selling vehicles on Earth, a total triumph. But here's the catch. For all their success, a $45,000 or $55,000 car is not a car for the global masses. That's premium. That's luxury. That's not a car for everyone. And this is where Master Plan Part 3 comes in. This is the real end game, total global scale. We're not talking about a few million cars. We're talking about 20 million vehicles a year. A goal so big it would dwarf giants like Toyota and Volkswagen combined. You simply cannot do that by selling $45,000 cars. The market for them is finite. The largest, most dominant segment on the planet is the sub-30,000 compact. This is where Project Redwood enters the fight. You need to understand, this $25,000 car isn't just an option for Tesla. It's not the next logical product. It is an existential necessity. It's a move the company must make to justify its mission. Why? because a competitive storm is already here, and it's rolling in from China. While you watch legacy brands like Volkswagen and GM struggle to make small EVs profitably, Chinese automakers are already there. They've cracked the code. Companies like BYD, Build Your Dreams, have shocked the entire industry. Their compact EV, the Seagull, launched in China for under $11,000. Let that sink in. It's well-built, it's packed with tech, and it's already expanding into Europe and South America.
So this $25,000 Tesla isn't just a tool for mass adoption. It's a defensive weapon. It's a shield. Without it, Tesla risks seeding the entire mass market, the single largest segment in the world, to new, aggressive, and fast rivals. The question was never if Tesla would do it. The question was how. And that how is the real story. It's the kind of tech breakdown we live for here at Dravaxa, so make sure you're subscribed. You're going to want to see this. So, how do you cut the cost of building a car in half? At Tesla's 2023 Investor Day, the engineers, not Elon, took the stage and gave the answer. And no, it wasn't just cheaper batteries. The answer is a revolution. It's called the unboxed manufacturing process. And you need to understand, this is not a small improvement. This is the biggest rethink of mass production since Henry Ford's moving line in 1913. Here's why. For a hundred years, we've built cars in a straight line. You weld a bare metal frame, the box, then you send this big, empty car-shaped thing on a mile-long journey. First, it goes to the paint shop, a massive, complex, and expensive bottleneck. Then you have to take the doors off just so robots and workers can get inside. You've seen the footage, robots awkwardly shoving an entire dashboard through a tiny door opening, workers crawling inside to bolt in seats, wiring harnesses snake through the body like a complex surgery. Finally, after all that, you put the doors back on and marry the body to the chassis. It's slow, it's inefficient, and if one station stops, the entire line grinds to a halt. Tesla's unboxed method throws that century-old idea in the trash. Imagine building a car like a Lego set. Instead of one long line, you build everything at the same time in separate modular pieces. Over here, you have the front module. The Giga casting, the suspension, the motor, even the HVAC, all built as one piece. Over here, the rear module, the trunk, the rear motor, the rear suspension, another complete piece. In the middle, the structural battery pack, which is the floor of the car. And here's the genius part, the sides. The left and right sides of the car are stamped, painted, and fully assembled with doors, windows, and electronics all by themselves. Then, at the very end, these massive completed subassemblies come together. The seats are dropped in, the sides are bonded on, and the car is boxed up. The benefits of this? They are earth-shattering. Tesla claims this will reduce the factory footprint by over 40%. They are targeting a 50% reduction in manufacturing cost, and they estimate a 30% improvement in speed and density. Think about that paint shop bottleneck, gone. Instead of painting a whole car, you're painting a flat side panel. It's a fraction of the complexity. This is the secret. This is the core of the story. The manufacturing system is the product. The Model Q is simply the first car that will be born from it. And while every competitor is focused on what Tesla is building, they should be terrified of how Tesla is building it. This is the kind of breakthrough we cover every week at Dravexa. If you love this stuff as much as we do, hit that like button. All right, you know why it must exist and you know how it will be built. So now let's get to the main event, the what. What will this $25,000 Project Redwood actually be? First, the shape. If you're picturing a small, low-slung sedan, I want you to erase that image. All the evidence, all the sourcing, points in one direction. A compact crossover. Think of it as a baby Model Y. And that is a strategic masterstroke. You have to understand, the era of the sedan is fading. The hottest, best-selling segments on the planet are compact crossovers and hatchbacks. By choosing this shape, Tesla isn't just making a car, it's making a guaranteed global best seller. 
and don't expect the smooth, bubbly curves of the Model 3. The design language is shifting. You've seen the Cybertruck, you've seen the new Cybercab, the robot taxi built on this exact same platform. The clues all point to a sharp, angular, futuristic design. Less curve, more edge. Now for the most important part, the battery. This is the single most expensive component. It's the one thing that must be solved to hit that $25,000 price point. And the answer is LFP, lithium iron phosphate. You see, your typical long range EV uses an NMC battery, nickel, manganese, cobalt. They're energy dense, but they are expensive and they rely on volatile and frankly ethically messy supply chains for that cobalt. LFP, on the other hand, is cobalt free. This makes it 20 to 30% cheaper right off the bat. It's also chemically safer, far less prone to thermal runaway, and it is incredibly durable, able to withstand thousands of charge cycles with minimal degradation. It's one drawback, lower energy density. But in a smaller, lighter, hyper-efficient car, that drawback becomes almost irrelevant. The consensus from supply chain analysts points to a structural LFP pack of around 53 to 54 kilowatt hours. So, what does that get you? It gets you the mass market sweet spot, a range of approximately 250 to 300 miles on a single charge. That's it. That's the magic number that kills range anxiety for 99% of drivers. And performance? It's still a Tesla. You're not getting plaid mode, but you are looking at a 0 to 60 time of around 6 to 7 seconds. That is still quicker than almost any gasoline competitor, like a Honda CRV or Toyota RAV4. But the battery isn't the only secret weapon. There's another one, hidden deep in the wiring, a 48-volt architecture. For decades, cars have used a 12-volt system to power your lights, your windows, your computers. This requires thick, heavy, expensive copper wiring. By moving to 48 volts, a move pioneered in the Cybertruck, Tesla can use wires that are dramatically thinner and lighter. This slashes the amount of copper needed, cuts weight, and makes the entire car cheaper and simpler to assemble. This is the kind of deep-level engineering we love to break down on Dravexa. If you do too, show us some love and hit that subscribe button. Inside the cabin, expect minimalism taken to its absolute extreme. We're talking about a single, central touchscreen for everything. No, you are not getting an instrument cluster. You are not getting a wall of buttons. You are getting the ultimate expression of cost-driven, efficient design. But here is the most crucial part of the entire car. It will be built from day one with every camera, every sensor, and all the processing power for full self-driving. This is the business model. You have to see it. The $25,000 car is just the Razor. The high-margin monthly FSD subscription, that is the Razor Blade. This is how Tesla plans to generate massive recurring revenue long after you've driven off the lot. Okay, so this is the final piece of the puzzle, the one you've all been asking in the comments. When and where? Now this is the most volatile part of the entire story. You know that timelines in the car industry are difficult. You also know that Tesla's timelines are, let's say, notoriously optimistic. Elon originally targeted 2025, but as we stand here in late 2025, the most reliable reports, the data from the supply chain, the tooling orders, all of it points to a more realistic schedule. Expect the official start of production, or SOP, in late 2026. Expect the real volume ramp up throughout 2027. So where does the first one roll off the line? The Alpha line, the test bed for this entire unboxed revolution, is being built and tested right now at Giga Texas. This is where they will perfect the process. This is where they will work out the bugs. And once it's perfected, they will copy and paste this revolutionary factory design across the entire globe.
the first factory being built from the ground up specifically for this new car and this new process is Giga Mexico. That plant in Nuevo León is being designed to be the primary production hub for this entire next-generation platform. And we're already seeing intense speculation and high-level negotiations for a Giga India, a move that would be absolutely essential to conquering the massive South Asian market. So, let's zoom out. What does this all mean? The Tesla Model Q is more than just a car. You have to see it for what it is. It is the physical embodiment of a manufacturing idea, a holy grail that automakers have been chasing for a hundred years. If Tesla pulls this off, if they launch a $25,000, 250-mile range compact SUV in 2026, the consequences are not small. They are tectonic. For you, the consumer, this marks the definitive end of the EV compromise. For the first time, you'll be able to buy an electric car that is not only cheaper to run, but is actually cheaper to buy than its gasoline equivalent without sacrificing a single thing. But for Legacy Auto, for Ford, for GM, for Toyota, this is a code red scenario. They will be forced to compete not just with Tesla's brand, not just with the software, not just with the supercharger network, but with a 50% manufacturing cost advantage. That is almost an impossible gap to close. It threatens to make their own EV programs obsolete before they even get started. And for Tesla, this is it. This is the key. This is the weapon that unlocks that 20 million vehicle per year goal. This is what transitions Tesla from a premium car maker to the car maker for the entire planet. The world is right to be talking. The $25,000 Tesla, whatever they finally call it, is not just the most anticipated vehicle of the decade. It's a Trojan horse. It's built with a revolutionary process, and it is designed to conquer the final stronghold of the internal combustion engine. The Model Q is coming, and it's bringing a revolution with it. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive on Dravexa. If you learned something today, do us a favor and hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe and ring that bell. You have no idea what we have planned next. We'll see you in the next one.